Okay, friends, so the first part of the prologue really takes a deep dive into hobbits. Now, I'm going to just come right out and acknowledge that I frankly find this whole prologue to be a little bit pretentious. I'm just going to say it. I'm sorry, Tolkien and the Tolkien gods and all those folk. But um, just know that if this feels like it's bearing the weight of a lot of... Um, like inside jokes, like you're totally not missing something. Like Tolkien absolutely, I feel like kind of came in at the finish here and started name dropping left and right. And if you're coming at this fresh and, you know, even if you know the story, a lot of this is probably a little bit of a whoosh kind of moment. So don't feel bad. Uh, I'll try to address some of that. But the first thing he does is concerning, well, we actually get the chapter called Concerning Hobbits in a bit, but he does talk, he goes into a deep dive on Hobbits. So I have some notes on that to kind of try and summarize this. So the biggest takeaway, I think, from this prologue is trying to give you the background about Hobbits to explain that they are very sheltered folk, okay? They stay within the confines of what they know. They stay literally within the confines of their land. They are self-governed. And it even goes on to clarify that within this self-government, they limit themselves to a post service and a police service. And even the police is kind of like, well, they like patrol the border for like wolves and stuff. So pretty low key folk. Uh, we'll learn much more about them in chapter one and would love to kind of get into more discussion about Hobbit antics. But um Anyway, uh, I learned some vocabulary in this part that I had actually been like using and accessing through the Lord of the Rings online game for literally over a decade and didn't realize what they meant. A matham. A matham is, according to Tolkien, what, you know, the hobbits would refer to as some kind of relic or valuable that's just kind of a hodgepodge of things that uh, are important to them. That's a matham. I've been collecting them for years. I have probably thousands of them in my inventory in my fake little virtual hobbit hole, but I didn't even know what they were. So learning moment for Danielle. Same with the uh, smiles, smiles. Sorry, I don't, I uh, I should probably go look that up on some Tolkien dictionary. But uh, yeah, now I learned that it's the large and ramifying tunnels. So that's why the great smiles is called that. Now I know. Um, also, um... Let me make sure this is still in the same section. Yeah, so another piece about the Hobbits that we learn is kind of like a lot of nuance about their relationships with the other races, namely the dwarves, the men, and the Hobbit. The dwarves, the men, and the elves. We learn a lot about the Hobbits' interaction as well. But um, So the short story there is they don't really trust or chill with any of them anymore. There was a long history of them coordinating and allying with basically everybody. But as time went on, they kind of siloed themselves to the Shire and have kind of stuck to their own since then. It, it even goes on to say that they spent less and less time with the elves to the point that they're kind of like afraid of them now. Um and distressful, basically, of anybody who's not in the Shire. So that is um, the bit about the Hobbits, specifically. Yeah. 